Richard and I designed the Strider Club as an inshore cruiser that would be easy yet fun to sail. 24 feet long, with a big cockpit and four berths, the Strider has shallow keels for windward work and can motor at six knots using a four horsepower outboard. Sailing Striders to the Baltic would be an ambitious trip, but we had sailed there before and enjoyed it. Sailing single-handed in a convoy of three boats would be both challenging and different, but we hoped it would also be more fun than all sailing in the same boat. I was sailing the red boat, Richard the blue one, while the yellow one was sailed by Stuart Fisher, who had sailed with us many times before, but this was to be his first long single-handed trip. The voyage needed careful planning as we wanted to visit as many countries as possible. So we decided on a circular route that would take us up the east coast of Sweden before sailing to Helsinki and Tallinn. We would return across the heart of Sweden by canal to Gothenburg before sailing back through Denmark to the Kiel Canal. We would be away for three months and so decided to finish the trip at my parents' home in North Holland. We left our home port of Plymouth at the end of May and set off across Lime Bay, past the Dorset coast and on up the channel. The weather was favourable and the sea smooth, so we soon settled into the routine of sailing by day and anchoring at night, because we planned never to sail more than 70 miles at a stretch. Sailing from Plymouth to Kiel single-handed in 24-foot catamarans is a good three weeks cruise but for us it was to be just a stepping stone to the Baltic. We spent a couple of days in the Solent and then carried on until eventually we reached Dover and after a day's rest motor sailed off into the sunrise. Destination anywhere between Dunkirk and Zeebrugge. As usual the Dover Straits were very busy but the light winds made it easy to keep clear of all the shipping. The wind began to pick up as the sun rose and by mid-morning a light following wind had set in and with spinnakers flying we made good progress up the French and Belgian coasts and that evening we arrived in Ostend, our first foreign port. We were still on schedule to reach the Dutch island of Texel in time to watch the Rand Texel beach cat race to be held on June the 10th although as we had to sail over 150 miles in two days we would need good winds and early starts to make it. Fortunately, leaving Ostend at 4.30 next morning we had a fast sail in a wonderful following wind. In strong winds like this we usually sailed downwind under spinnaker alone as it makes sailing under autopilot a lot easier yet it is only slightly slower. Sadly, the wind slowly moderated, and by hook, the entrance to Europort and Rotterdam, it was calm. Even with 30 ships crossing our path as they made for Rotterdam, Stuart still felt relaxed enough to doze. After a night stop in Scheveningen, we arrived off the entrance to Den Helder at the south end of the island, just as the first round Texel race boats crossed our path. It was perfect timing. Despite the haze and light winds, it was a magnificent sight as we watched 850 beach cats pass us by. We took a last look back at the passing fleet and then entered the marina when it was time to meet family and friends and to try and repair our electronic equipment which was already causing us major problems. After a couple of days rest we were off again. Rather than sail the offshore route towards the Kiel Canal 
we decided that it would be more interesting to sail amongst the narrow channels and sandbanks of the Wadensee, that stretch of water between the Wadden Island and the Dutch mainland, which is still home for hundreds of traditional Dutch yachts and fishing boats. That first night we anchored in what appeared to be the middle of nowhere but was actually carefully positioned at the edge of the channel so that we could dry out for the first time since leaving Plymouth, scrub the anti-fouling and remove the oil which had been staining our topsides since Southampton. And then we went off to stretch our legs. Sailing in such flat and shallow water was a new experience for Richard and Stuart. When the tide was out, the water completely disappeared. When it was in, all the sandbanks were covered. We had to learn the hard way that even with our shallow draught, we had to follow the widdies that marked the channels religiously, if we were not to go aground. A high pressure system had settled in the North Sea which meant that we either had strong northeasterly winds, which made filming impossible as we beat to windward through the narrow twisting channels, or we had flat calms when we motored. Sailing in these waters is, more than anywhere, dominated by the tides, as the watersheds behind each island are a critical point, for here the water is at its shallowest and the tidal streams change, so that when we judged it right, it seemed that we could sail swiftly on forever. With a schedule to meet, we had to keep pushing on whatever the tide or wind, until finally we left Dutch waters and entered Borkum, the first German Wadensee island. After clearing customs, we tried to repair the autopilots, two of which had already stopped working. Not a lot in here, is there? One bit falling out from there. And, uh, Where, what sort of water was it? Well, wet water. Short water. Despite resoldering and repairing the faults, the repairs only lasted a couple of hours before failing again, this time for good. By contrast to less than picturesque Borkum, Baltram, 40 miles further east, which we entered at dusk the next day after a long, slow beat against the tide, was a delightful place, and the harbour master and locals all made us welcome. This morning we had to wait for the tide to rise before being able to leave Baltram and continue our journey east. We had some fast, exciting sailing in the flat water to the lee of the German islands, the area made famous in Erskine Childer's book, The Riddle of the Sands. The impression from the book is of a vast, desolate area, but in our case our speed allowed us to pass the string of islands in a single tide, and so reached the Elbe estuary. Without electric autopilots, Stuart and Richard had to resort to hand steering or a string and shock cord self-steering system. With the tide under us and a following wind, we raced on up the Elbe to Brunsbuttel and the start of the Kiel Canal.